All right. Hey, welcome back to the channel today. I have a special guest and I'm so excited to introduce you to Ivy from Pathways uh, Immigration. And I just thought that we would uh, bring her on today because she's going to be so much better than me at talking about the recent changes to the skilled migrant category, which is a huge deal because that's most of the people that come in are interested in that. And there's been quite a few changes. She will also be overviewing some other changes that have been happening over the last six to nine months. And they're just really great company. If you have any questions about immigrating here or just thinking about it, you can literally just reach out to them and they can just answer those and just see, you know, what visa possibilities you have. And I will put all her information in the description below. So it'd be easy for you to access that. So welcome, Ivy. Thank you for coming. Hi, Tara. Thank you for having me. And hello to your viewers. Um, it's <laughs> it's it'll be um it's good opportunity to be here and to reach out and also to assist everyone, anyone who has got questions about moving to New Zealand. So thank yeah, you. Yeah. So me. I just, I, we're just going to dive right in guys to the um, skilled migrant category changes and she'll overview kind of where we're at now and what the changes are, but uh, it's great and it's a big one. And so there's, there's lots of nuances to it. So we'll do our best to cover it, but go ahead and post questions below and we can just work together and getting those answered um, as changes are good. I think it's in, it's moving in the, in a good direction. So that's right. So um, here in New Zealand, there are several uh, residence categories. We've got, you know, the active investor, but the parent residence. But the main one um, where people would qualify for residence is the skilled migrant category. So um, this is the points-based system, uh, which has been reviewed, and the new changes will be introduced in November of this year. As it stands, the current skilled migrant category is the points-based system. So you know, you get particular points for a you know, particular criterion. At the moment, the minimum points for um, for a skilled migrant category expression of interest is 180 points. So you've got points for your age, qualifications, skilled work, uh, skilled work experience, skilled employment in New Zealand, that kind of that um that kind of thing right. so at the moment it if you want to apply for the skilled migrant category you need to apply for what's called an expression of interest so this is the the first stage so right. expression of interest even, sorry you can't even do the expression of interest unless you have those points is that right um yes unless you have claimed your points correctly claimed your so, points correctly because, no that's a good way to yes. say it and just so you guys mm -hmm. know like i moved to new zealand in 2013 and it was 140 i believe at that point and then it went up to 160 and 180 so it's just it has gradually been getting harder and so that's as right. I, as you guys know i help a lot of people move over here and they just hit it's hard to hit that 180 so let's i'm excited about the changes so but that's right, Tara. So it, it did come from 140, then 260. Okay. And then last year, they, when they reopened the skilled migrant category, uh, they said the 180 points would kick in earlier this year. So the 180 points, like I said, is made up of age, qualification, skill, employment. But on top of that, you'll also need to meet English requirements for primary applicants, which could be an IELTS test, uh, 6.5 for the principal applicant and five for secondary applicants. That would be your children or your spouse. Um, mm -hmm. You'll also need to meet health and character requirements, which means, you know, um, nothing uh, of a disease that would cause um, the New Zealand government um, money wise and resource wise. So that kind of thing. So, okay. um, so those are all still in place. The like those you know, are those health, still remain health exams that you have to do. Like as a as an American citizen, I don't know, that's for every um, you know immigrant that comes over. But like we had to do FBI fingerprints and. We had to actually show pictures of our family being happy, like a real family over years. <laughs> like you couldn't just say that you were together. Like I actually had to send in actual photos. I don't know if this is still the case, but it's kind of funny, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah I really like it. I think that that the immigration is only bringing in people that is useful to New Zealand, you know, where we have lots of whatever you think about immigration here in U.S., um, you, New Zealand doesn't have a border. And so they have, they're just, they have really good rules around it. I like it. It's hard to get in, but. It's fair. It's hard, hard to get in. Um, but, you know, New Zealand, because it's such a small country, um, we like to, to attract high-skilled 
um, highly paid migrants because mm. of the you know the small population we've got. Um, so that's that's been the focus of the skilled migrant category, hence the name. So and that's correct. You said that you talked about FBI clearances. That that remains. So if you you know you present a police clearance from your country of citizenship and any other countries you've lived in for 12 months or more in the last 10 years. So that still remains. Uh, you'll still need to provide general medical and x-rays uh, for applicants that would need to provide those. So those haven't changed at all. Mm -hmm. So um, the skilled migrant category, this will be ended, well, the current policy would be finishing by the, I don't know if finishing is the right term, but the last expression of interest draw under the current policy would be the 16th, uh, um, this August. So the 16th of August, which is the Wednesday, a couple of weeks from now, but the expressions of interest have to be in by the 15th of August. Otherwise, you know, basically you miss out. Um, so that's to get and under then, the current way that it's done. Under the current, under the, you know, the 180 points system. Got it. Right. So that's what it is. So if you're now, ready and, and no, you've been not finishing all that paperwork, get it in. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, you know, um, and like I said, you, you'll need to have claimed your points correctly mm. because at the moment you'll also need for you to be able to put in an expression of interest. You'll also need to meet the uh, median wage, which at the moment is $29.66. So even if you've got a skilled job, you wouldn't be eligible to um, remember. With In terms of skilled employment, these are still, um, immigration still relies on the Australian and New Zealand standard classification of occupation or NSCO. So, you know, the, the job has to be classified as an NSCO skill level one, two, or three. And the applicant must be deemed suitable for the role by meeting the requirements as set out in ANSCO. So there would be, for example, requirements for bachelor's degree qualification or in the absence of a bachelor's degree qualification, five years of relevant work experience to substitute oh, okay. for the qualification. Okay. So, you know, there are a lot of variables that can come into play with the expression of interest. Mm -hmm. uh, with the current skilled migrant category, your employer does not have to be an accredited employer. Mm -hmm. um, so if you, basically you have a skilled job, you have a, you know, you're paid at the correct rate, uh, you meet other requirements like the English um, and the points, then you can put, we encourage everyone who qualifies under the current policy to get it in there now because yeah. you've got a very small window of opportunity. Right, because you so, already, it already worked, um, so like, just leave it. <laughs> if you if everything works, I would definitely put it in. I totally agree. Yeah. So can I just ask a quick question? At the about, moment, sorry, yes, sure. About the expression of yeah, interest. Sorry. So when you put your expression of interest, when I did it, it was, how do I say, it was still like a pool, like they randomly would pick people. Is that still the way that it works? Okay. That is correct. So at the moment you put in your expression of interest, it goes into a pool. And if you have 180 points, it will be automatically, at least 180 points, it will be automatically picked from the pool. Oh. So the ex yes. So the expression of interest basically is information, a lot of information that you need to put in there and uh, to justify how you meet the points criteria. Mm. Um, you, once you put in an Expression of interest at the moment, it's $590 uh, New Zealand dollars when you put it in. And think about give or take probably a, a few days to maybe a couple of weeks, they'll issue what's called the invitation to apply. So mm -hmm. the invitation to apply basically means your expression of interest has been picked from the pool. Now, these are the requirements for you to complete in, a, in order to apply for the skilled migrant category. So the, intent, the invitation to apply or the ITA lists all of the mandatory documents that need to be submitted uh, with the skilled migrant category. At the moment, um, the, well, the immigration fee for the uh, SM, for SMC is $4,290 on lodgement of the application. Mm -hmm. And our recent experience is that it's processed anywhere between two and four months. So that that's the current skilled migrant category. Oh, that's not too bad. And, well, in it saying was that, like a year, it's not too bad. No. But yes, it, they they had a you know um, the processing times before weren't great. But in saying that, the two to four months would be for countries that would not require what's called a national security check. So yeah. the national security check is a third party check 
um, that's undertaken by a different agency within a different agency. And there's no time frame for the national security check. So oh, sure, yeah, th fair. that would probably throw a spanner in the works in terms of processing right. crimes. But Another government clean... needs to get involved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So question about clean application. Oh, I'm sorry. The um. Okay. So what was my question? So what you're saying, just so I make sure I understand, is that someone puts in their expression of interest, they, they, the way they've calculated, they have their 180 points. And you look at it and you and immigration looks at it and they see that it's accurate, yes. then they allow you to go in. So that's the point of the expression. It's just to make sure that you fit all you tick all the boxes and have enough points and then you can apply. Isn't there like a limit to the amount that they can let in or uh no, at the moment there uh, there is well, it used to be a quota. Um, system, but I, not with. I don't think they're doing that now because okay. skilled migrant category was suspended over COVID, hmm. um, and in fact, for the first draw in November, I think they got like six thousand EOIs in the pool oh. or something, and you know they had to accommodate that because it was suspended for such a long time. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. got it. Yeah, so that's that's the current skilled migrant category. Okay, current. So now mm -hmm. we're going to move to. Um, so I'm just going to take this up. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. So we're going to move um, on to the new one. So the new skilled migrant category, what they've done is they've basically simplified it. So simplified, uh, meaning instead of the 180 points, you now just need to aim for six points. So uh, with the skilled, mi the current skilled migrant, well, you know, the, the main difference, I guess, here is that because they've simplified the skilled migrant category, They've removed the points um, required for, you know, for age, because that was the thing um, that you had points for in the um, old skilled migrant yeah. category. Um, Under 40. So I'm just going to quickly, yeah, I'm just going to quickly show you what it looks like now. Okay, cool. Um, okay. So this is the new skilled migrant, the simplified skilled migrant category points system. So as you can see, they are now focusing on, you know, occupational registration or recognized qualifications or the income. And if you don't have enough points to get to the six points, then it lets you supplement it with New Zealand work experience. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, how are so, you getting New Zealand work experience if you can't come there and work? That's that's another. I'll talk about that um, shortly. But basically, um, to cut and, and the current scheme, um, the current policy, you'll need to be on an accredited employer work visa to be able to, you know, obviously to obtain a job in New Zealand. So that's a uh, it's a different um, category altogether from the policy that was um, that was active last year and pre-COVID. So from July. Uh, in 2022, immigration has introduced what's called the accredited employer work visa. So now with this skilled new skilled migrant category, I said earlier in the current policy for the skilled migrant category, your employer does not have to be accredited. But with this new policy, your employer needs to be an accredited employer for you to qualify for the skilled mm. migrant category. All right, so I'm just going to quickly run through the, the, you know, the simplified point system. So occupational registration, these would be like, for example, doctors, nurses, you know, teachers, you know, that kind of thing. So there are corresponding points uh, for the occupational registration. So yeah, so you can see it goes on from six, five, four, and then two. Um, and the can points I just ask a question about that? So are you, yes. that says occupational registration, does that mean an occupation where like, you know, you have a, you need to have like a teaching certificate to teach, like that That's kind of thing? So like a business That's person, correct. that doesn't count because you wouldn't really have that. No, that doesn't count. So doesn't this count. is like more for occupations that require annual registration, like annual for example, like I said, Thank you. you know, doctors, um, nurses, licensed immigration advisors are registered. Uh, have occupational registration too. Oh, okay. Sure. Um, and then uh, the recognized qualifications. So it's a ladderized points system. So the higher the the um, recognized qualification, the higher the points. 
So, and then the next one would be the income. So again, this relies on what's called the median wage here in New Zealand. So the median wage at the moment is $29.66. It's reviewed normally around November, um, and they announce when the new median wage kicks in, usually around February the following year. So if we're at $29.66 now, that's going to change um, early next year. Yeah. Um, so, so does that... Does that take in consideration like um, like exchange rates? Because like the New Zealand dollar to the U.S. dollar, I feel like that would be pretty easy to meet. Uh, the med sorry, the median wage is basically uh, based on the studies done by Statistics New Zealand. Okay. Um, so it, yeah, so uh, it relies I think mostly on what's called you know the, the median income in New Zealand and why and and this is why migrants need to be able to meet this. It's the median well, right wage. but what That's i'm saying is yeah what i'm saying is so if someone in the us is making 20 dollars us an hour it would still mm -hmm. be it would be you know like 30 something in new zealand dollars so that's what i'm saying so okay so and uh, this one it's got to be a job i think no it doesn't it doesn't i don't know how to, how to address this but basically okay. it means that this income has to be earned in new zealand so I don't. Oh, think it, I see. It. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, because the only the, for the skilled migrant category, um, again, you'll either have an offer of employment or already in skilled employment with an accredited employer in New Zealand, which means they've already committed you to they've already committed to paying you at least the median wage, whatever the median wage is uh, in New Zealand. Okay. Okay. Um, like 80, I think 80% of the time, or maybe 90% of the time, I'm not sure of the statistics, people who apply for the skilled migrant category are in New Zealand anyway. Hmm. Um, so, um, but we'll see how this policy actually comes into play when November comes around. So, yeah, right, um, that's true. Like once it actually yeah. comes into play. The other question was, so like if someone, okay, so if you're not, if you're not in a, a organ, you know, occupational registration, you're not in that kind of job, and, you know, so obviously degrees, you can get points. So let's say you have a bachelor's degree, which would be most people, and they're only getting three points. And there's, say, a marketing manager and have been doing it, you know, for 20 years, let's say, or 15 years. Um, so what you're saying is they would need to get a job offer in New Zealand that would be three times the median wage to get those extra points. Am I understanding that? Okay, so the, the combination is a bit different. So Okay. Um, because it's a ladderized system, like you said, if it's a bachelor's qualification, several considerations. A, is it New Zealand Qualifications Authority recognized? Because if it's not, then that's another process that you'll need to go through in New right, Zealand the NZQA before has you can. Yeah, yes, that's right. Before yeah. you can claim those points. So assuming it's a New NZQA recognized qualification, yeah. um, <clears throat> so you've got three points. You have to supplement it with three years of skilled work experience. So this ah. skilled work experience has to be in New Zealand. Ah. And the reasoning for that is because it's difficult and it's time consuming to verify work experience from overseas. Yeah. So, you know, um, basically, um, or another scenario, for example, someone has got a PhD, so they already have six points. Do they still need skilled employment? Absolutely, because hmm. skilled migrant category, uh, they'll they'll need to be still in skilled employment, um, and just rely on their PhD to get those six points. So, again, a lot of variations to how you can claim the points. A lot of little fish hooks in there, um, you know, in terms of the qualifications. If they're called, if they're you know, if it's a New Zealand recognized qualification, that's not a problem. Or if it's been completed in New Zealand, that's easily claimed. Mm -hmm. But if it were from somewhere else, then it needs to be checked if it meets policy requirements. And if it's not, then you know, ends at QA, and then you'll need to supplement it from points with skilled work experience. So if they, so just to be clear, if you have a PhD, you don't need anything else, or you also need to have a job you offer. Need, you need to have a job offer, a okay. skilled job offer from an accredited employer. Mm -hmm. So when I say, when I say skilled job offer, again, it's got to be, um, it's got to be within the ANSCO one, two, three list of occupations um, and paid at the median wage, at least the median wage, $29.60. 29. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ooh, all right. 
Okay. So, you know, th it, it, there are a lot of permutations that can arise from this new policy. Um, again, the important thing to remember is that um, apart from meeting the points requirements, the English requirements haven't changed, oh. the health and characters um, requirements haven't changed. So those remain the same. Uh, okay, so you still have to do all those same things. It's just the point situation. Okay, the points, so yes. um, I think you guys are going to need to talk to Pathways if you're, <laughs> because this is like, I can think of like a hundred scenarios, which I'm not going to just throw you off the top of your head, um, like how I would calculate the points for this, because just reach out to her and I think that that would be helpful. Um, I think that it's also a good, it might be helpful to talk about. So, because I can, I, I'm not seeing a lot of options for people to not get points through getting working in New Zealand. So how would they do that then? To get um, so that's the thing. So they, because the skilled migrant category, it focuses again on, you know, it has, there has to be skilled offer of employment or skilled work experience in New Zealand. Right, but how so do they, they do don't, that if they can't get in? Yeah. So that's, that's the other thing that, you know, the, um, it's cash 22 as well. So if you don't, you know, you'll need to have a job offer to be able to apply for the accredited employer work visa. Mm -hmm. And then the accredited employer work visa would obviously be a path. Hopefully there would be a pathway to residence. So I'm just going to briefly talk about the accredited employer work visa. Mm -hmm. So um, Immigration New Zealand has introduced this change last year. So for any New Zealand employer wanting to employ a migrant, a, they need to be accredited by Immigration New Zealand. This means they've subjected them, you know, they've submitted a preliminary checks and say that we're compliant with um, New Zealand laws. Once they've got the accreditation, then they'll need to provide a job check, which is basically they've provided evidence they've tried to recruit New Zealanders, but there are no suitable people uh, to fill in the roles. And can we please have unique job links for job tokens for these people to apply. So the job, the last one, the job token is the unique link for a migrant to apply for an accredited employer work visa. In the past, um, immigration would look at NSCO um, to uh, satisfy themselves if a, an applicant is suitably qualified. In the current regime, uh, it's the employer who sets the requirements. So for example, I want a painter for example, painter blast, sand, you know, painter blaster. Mm -hmm. Normally they'd say they'd require maybe like three years work experience. But if the employer says this is an entry level role, we'll accept anyone with six months work experience and they're paid at this rate, mm -hmm. um, provided that an applicant meets the requirements, then they can apply for an accredited employer work visa. So how they'll say, uh, and just to transition to the skilled migrant category, let's say they've got a bachelor's qualification that's been recognized by Immigration New Zealand, and they've got three years of work experience as a sand blaster painter, then that'll give them six points. And that'll be a pathway for, for residents for them in the future. So for the no, accredited no. work visa, is there like a time limit or is that just what's set with each different employer? Um, the accreditation itself by employers is renewed annually. Hmm. There's no, in terms of the time limit, the accredited employer work visa at the moment um, is valid for, they're issuing it initially for three years, but oh, they've okay. announced That's earlier uh, yeah. this year that any work visas so three years three. So at the moment, uh, but they've announced that they are now extending the validity to five years. Oh. So for anyone who's been granted a three-year accredited employer work visa from November this year, they can apply for the balance of their visa to get the full five-year entitlement. And the expectation is that within that five-year um, period, they'll have a pathway to residence. Otherwise, right. there is a 12-month stand-down period you know, where they're, you know, they'll need to leave New Zealand for a year before they can apply for a further accredited employer work visa. Uh -huh. And in November, as of, well, in November this year, any accredited employer work visas will be granted for a duration of five years. And again, you know, expectation is that there is going to be a uh, residence pathway for them. Oh, that's, I, is it me or does that seem like a lot easier? Like a, a, at least giving options. Like, cause before it was like, if you don't have this then you can't do this and too bad. Um, you know, like there wasn't like that work visa option where you could come in a different way and then work towards your residency. Some cases there were, but I was finding that quite hard. Um, 
there is still the work to residence option um, under the accredited employer work visa uh -huh. and normally that's for the sector agreements um i wouldn't say it's easy if if i were to mm -hmm. compare to the previous policies the accredited employer work visa is a lot stricter compared to the previous um you know years this accredited employer work visa basically limits your stay in New Zealand for five years if you don't have an accredited, if you don't have a skilled migrant pathway or a residence pathway. Whereas in the past, people have been here on work visas for 10 years and there was no limit on them being on the work visa. I see. So but at the same time, if you want to get a pathway to residency and you don't have 180 points and you can't get a job because you're not over there, like you kind of have no option, which is what I, I experience as the majority of people, mm -hmm. unless they're on like the green list or the ones that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. So that's, it's, yeah, it's complicated. <laughs> it, it is complicated. And that's why some people also approach this for a, you know, a student visa pathway and yeah. um, because some people who, who've got the funds and want to move to New Zealand, they invest in studying in New Zealand for, you know, a year or two, whatever level of um, education. And that sort of sets them up nicely for a residence pathway in the yeah. future. So, you know, there are different permutations into achieving residence. Um, it really just varies on how flexible, I suppose, someone is in terms of, you know, their, their long-term goal and, you know, the hoops that they're willing to go through to right. be able to achieve right. residence. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. So quick question about the um, accredited work visa. Does that, when someone comes here, say like, and they get the five years, do they get the social benefits in New Zealand, like the healthcare and like the right to vote? And Okay. So for anyone um, coming to New Zealand on a visa of at least two years, they would be entitled to um, public health system and, um, they would not be entitled to vote. That is for resident or citizens. Okay. Um, but I think mostly it's about the public health, publicly funded health service is a big one. Big um, one. And that's why that's why uh, when immigration, you know, assesses health requirements, they need to make sure that these people are gonna come in, you know, healthy and but yeah. Um, anyone coming on a visa uh, for two years or longer would be eligible for publicly funded health services. Okay, cool. Great. Not not benefits as provided by, you know, the Ministry of Social Development, but publicly funded health um, is hmm. yes, voting, no, benefits, no. Got it. Okay, got it. Good. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I guess, like you said, Tara, there is a lot of fish hooks in, in the policy there. I know I'm sure people would have a lot of questions yeah. about what we've just discussed. So um, Tara would be displaying um, my contact details below, but um, if you do want to reach out directly, um, my name's Ivy, I'm one of the licensed immigration advisors here at Pathways to New Zealand. Um, we do have a website that you can jump in. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly show yeah, that. Yeah, pull that up guys. have it, that'd be great. So that's us. Um, can you see it? Yes. Oh, okay. Nice. So that's Pathways to New Zealand. Um, we we have offices in the Hamilton and Wellington region. Okay. We've been, you know, over thirty years. We've been in the industry for thirty years. Um, there are a lot of we have, you know, tabs for the services that we offer depending on what pathway you're looking at. We also have a jobs board. Um, so this oh, one, that's nice. mo yeah, so this mostly we have, um, you know, medical fields that are mostly here, um, I think. So feel free to browse through that. We have our sister company, NZDR, um, helps with the medical recruitment. Um, but if you've got any further questions, our contact screen is here. Please do not hesitate to get in touch with us. And we've got, um, you know, a, a team of 12 advisors who would be uh, mm. more than willing to assist with any questions you may have. Does it cost to contact us? No, it doesn't. Um, yes, and that's the our question. Yes. So um, it's always been Pathways philosophy to give clients or people the correct information at the get go, because it's easier to do that than to fix something. And um, so we yes. Consults are free. 
we would only be charging uh, once we agree to a visa pathway. And even then we would tell you what the upfront costs are. We are probably in the mid range um, cost wise in the market. And yeah, you, we speak several languages in the office as well. So if oh. I'm Filipino, so we've got an Indonesian, we've got Chinese, we've got um, Indian. Uh, we've got French, we've got Spanish speakers in the office. So there is a plethora of languages that can be spoken in this office. Oh, that's so great. And I, just so you guys know, I've like reviewed their, their costs are very reasonable for what you're getting. I just was like, oh, this is great. So I am on board for recommending pathways to you guys and definitely reach out. Do not hesitate. If you have, just have a question and you're just thinking, I, I would love to come to New Zealand. I just wonder if I can, because Everybody gets lost on the immigration site, although I think it's, well, really well done, the immigration site and easy to figure out. But, you know, there's all those different circumstances. You know, somebody in the family has a little bit of a health issue and you're not sure, you know, like there's so many like little things that matter. And so just reach out to Ivy and her team and that'll be great. So, yeah. So yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. And if you guys have questions, comment below, put them in there. We, I'll do my best and maybe I'll just, you know, send them to her. Maybe we'll do another video. If this was helpful or if there's more information that you want to know, comment below, let us know. And um, I will see you next week. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye.